Hi, this is Craig Tomler from Startup Stories, and I'm here with uh, Leonie Dawson, um, and we're going to talk about her startup journey. How fun. Thank you for having me. <laughs> That's all right. So, Leonie, tell me a bit about your business. Sure. So, uh, I've been a blogger for 12 years. Um, like many Canberrans, I started off in the public service uh, and decided that I wanted to do something else with my life. So, I started blogging, and I started selling online courses mm -hmm. way back in the olden days when nobody else was really doing it. It was mm -hmm. kind of like newfound territory. It's like, whoa, we can sell courses online, yes. dear Lord. And, and it's kind of grown organically from there. So now I have an online training academy which teaches people about um, creativity and spirituality and online business and all that kind of good stuff. And we've got 4,000 members worldwide. And I'm also the best-selling author of my goals workbooks, mm -hmm. which are used by a quarter of a million people around the world. Yeah, which is huge. It's pretty huge. awesome. It's yeah, pretty and I'd say there's a lot of people in Canberra who haven't even heard of you. Yes, so totally. Like, um, which is amazing, because you've got a global audience, not yes, a local audience. Yes, yeah. yes. It's um, quite fun. And I, most of my people are in the US, so mm. yeah, I, I don't mind. I, I like being the, the unknown celebrity. Nice. Yes, micro, <laughs> micro celebrity. Yes, micro celebrity. I call term, it the so Z grade yes. internet celebrity. <laughs> so, so th that's kind of been your journey. But how did you get into, um, you know, founding the business? What what made you take those steps? So I've always kind of gone the organic route in that. I knew I wanted to do something different and I thought I'd just try out all these different things that I mm -hmm. love doing and see what could end up crafting into a viable business model. So, you know, I've sold artwork at the Old Best Depot Markets. I've run live spiritual retreats here in Canberra and I've run physical, like, coaching retreats as well um, in far north Queensland and sold prints. I've gone, like, done licensing deals I've just tried out all of the different mm -hmm. things that felt fun and the parts where I felt like I could make a really great income and do it as, as much passive income as possible then that worked for me so okay. yeah it's just been an organic journey of of trialing and taking things to market really really quickly mm -hmm. and seeing if it has a the right vibe and yeah. see if um, people love it and see if I can produce it for a price that's going to be right for me. Yeah, and then see if you can scale it in a way that doesn't involve lots of your time. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So, like, now we're a $2 million a year company. I've never worked full-time in my own business. Mm -hmm. So I, I max out about maybe 20, 25 hours a week. Yep. Yep. So at what point did you uh, make the leap out of the public service to say, right, you know, I'm now doing this full-time or you know, as full-time as you're doing it? I started migrating down um, probably about 2008 and over the space mm -hmm. of three years I kind of just reduced my days by one day a week uh, and so I was down to about three days a week and then I got up the duff and so I thought this is a great opportunity like I'm going to give birth then I might as well just not come back so yep. 2010 I just started going full time with yeah. my business and I also bought my husband out of his customs job. Oh great. Yes. That's fantastic. It was awesome. And so we spent the next five years travelling around Australia and we lived in with Sundays and Cairns and Tasmania and then decided to come back to, to Canberra for School. School. Yes. yes. That's, uh, that's, yeah, unfortunately, you can't buy your kids right. out of school yet. Uh, you can't homeschool, but it takes a lot of effort. A lot of effort. Yes. 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 Rather than having other people school your kids. Yes, yes. totally. Totally. Yes. I, I would so homeschool my kids if I didn't actually have to do the teaching, and then therefore outsourcing the teaching is called school. So yes. it's actually quite a novel concept there. Yes. <laughs> so. So what challenges have you sort of encountered along the way of, of, of that sort of journey? So uh, two big challenges for me, the ones that make me go cringe about. Uh, the first one is realising that being a Z-grade internet celebrity also meant that I had Z-grade internet trolls. Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> so there's, you know, there's, there's hate forums out there that are specifically for just to rip to shreds any person who's got any success in the, in the business or the blogging realm. And I was kind of surprised at just how personal the attacks get and mm -hmm. how it's not even just about me, but it's about my husband or my mm -hmm. children. 
um, that that was pretty horrific. So there's a bit of stalking involved too, because they they're deliberately trying to oh, find out about your family. And totally, they just hate them. reading. Yeah, and then yeah. just writing disgusting comments and like I for me it was my husband thought it was the funniest thing on earth. Um, I was like, I can't believe they're saying these awful things about you, baby. And he's like, honey, these are not happy people in well-adjusted relationships who are having a huge amount of success in their lives. So you can't really take that um, as an appropriate feedback mechanism. He's very yeah. wise. As long as it's just trolling and it doesn't become anything else. Exactly, yes. exactly. Yes. Which I would very quickly sh- shut that mm. down. Um, and the second one was when we started, I was selling all my, my books as ebooks, and then I started using print-on-demand services, and then we started printing it ourselves to, to bring it back in-house and get more flexibility and be able to control the distribution ourselves. Mm-hmm. Um, and I discovered uh, that I needed to be more mindful of cash flow because then I had, you know, like $200,000 printing bills and things like that. Yes. Which I'd negotiated in American dollars. So mm-hmm. when that went up, that also, that hurt a lot. So my journey then was like, okay, instead, I, I have a very, very high profit company, but now I actually need to actively manage cash flow to make sure I can invest in the next year's yeah. product collection. Yeah, well, I, it's 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 a something that any small business. I be, by that I mean business up to even ten, twenty million. Yes. Cash flow is always that thing you need to manage. It is critical. I find the same thing in my businesses. Cash flow is always king. Yeah, and yeah. I, I do think it's funny that it took me you know ten years to have to get to that point. You know, like my business had been so floaty up to that point, and mm-hmm. then to actually have to cough up some major cojones for, for book production. That was like, oh my God, okay, like, yes. I need to get with it yes. then. Yes. Yeah, it's been fun. Okay, cool. And um, what have you learnt along the way about you know setting up a business and about the experience? That making money is actually pretty easy mm-hmm. and that you don't have to be a born business mind or a born marketing mind. I'm definitely not one of those kids that you know would have like a multi-level marketing scheme around selling rocks and... You know, I wasn't, I was just the, the dreamy hippie kid. Um, and I definitely thought there's no way I can make money out of doing what I love. And it was a real milestone when I realized that I could just learn those things instead mm-hmm. and start applying them. So I really dedicated myself. I was like, okay, I'm going to earn $30,000 over the next year so I can quit my cubicle job. And then I was like, how? <laughs> what? I don't even understand. And I think a lot of people give up at that point. But for me, luckily, something in my brain said, well, other people have done it, so I just need to ma- learn how to do that as well. And that was a huge shift for me to learn that. I, yeah. I still have to learn every single day. And I think that's the path of the entrepreneur is to realize you don't get born knowing everything. No. You just have to learn it. No. And, and there are people out there who will teach you. Totally. You know, it, it, you know, some education is free, some costs money. Yes. And you've got to make an investment in some of it. Mm. But if you're prepared to invest in your own education, huge. It pays off. Totally. Really big time. Yeah. yeah. Massively, massively. Yeah. I'm, I've spent a lot of money on coaching and and programs and books and mm. things like that. And it's just that's the thing that drives the two million dollars. So of course, mm. it's a great investment. Yeah. No, that's great. Yeah. So, and uh, anything else you learned other than the learning? <laughs> uh Especially for women, I don't know if mm-hmm. blokes are the same way, but mindset is huge. Mm-hmm. And it's your own inner blocks that limit you. Yeah. And we all have subconscious blocks that maybe you want to, like, if you start earning more than anybody else in your family has ever earned, or maybe you've got, like, misconceptions about what being rich is, that actually starts limiting your process and your ability to progress further forward. So. You have to work on that over and over again and have your way of doing it, whether it's kinesiology, whether it's therapy, whether it's life coaching or business coaching. Yeah, whatever works. Whatever works. Yeah. Whatever level of hippie woo you want to go to. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, as long as it works. Totally. Yeah. And and I I suppose in some of those it's a sort of self living limiting beliefs. It's things totally. That, you know, I could never achieve that, or I'm not good enough, or, yes. you know, I couldn't walk into a major publishing house and do a deal with them, that sort of thing. Totally. Yeah. Totally. And, you know, I still have that, because 
it never goes away. <laughs> like, it never goes away, but you learn how to manage it. Totally. Yeah. It, like, I still think it's, it's one of the beliefs that I'm working on at the moment is like, oh, a publishing house would never want me. And my friends are all like, Leone, you sell a million dollars worth of books a year on your own. Like, I don't have any distribution anywhere except for my website, mm. and we're selling a million dollars worth of books a year. Um, so, yeah, there's, there's some obviously very, very old belief inside me that yeah. says... Oh, a publishing house where what you do. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's, it's very funny because to get a bestseller in Australia, you only need to sell something like 8,000, really? 10,000 books. Seriously. Whoa. Seriously. Whoa. Seriously. Okay. Mind blown. Well, I had the funny experience where, where back in the uh, mid 90s, I was writing a lot of how to books. Yes. You know, they're written on contract. So what I made out of them was kind of fixed. Yeah. Um, and it was the publisher who took all the risk, cool. so to speak. Because yep. if they didn't sell them, they didn't. They lost that money, right. whatever. But um, we used to sell them through news agencies because okay. they were sold as part of a magazine publisher. Rock on. And we used to sell, you know, 40,000, 50,000 copies of them. Um, I was still happy with the amount I got. It yeah, was still yeah. better than commission based. Yep. But um, because they were sold in news agencies, they weren't counted towards the bestseller list because wow. they weren't the right venues. Oh my goodness. So it's funny. So, so what you're selling online, you're a bestseller, but. The bookstores wouldn't consider you a bestseller because no. you don't sell through them. That's through right. Appropriate channels. That's right. But I, lo I also just love selling through my website because then I can capture yeah. leads and yes. upsell later into my other programs, which is bonza, and keep providing more support and free programs and all that kind of mm -hmm. stuff. So on one level, I want to get your the, tribe. Yeah, totally. My yes. tribe's it's pretty bustling now. We've got seventy five thousand on the mailing list and three hundred thousand across social media. And I, you know, I love that. So I do want to go into bookstores, but then I kind of just like doing my own weird thing on the internet as well. Yeah. yeah the only one that seems to still have any real value is the New York. Yes. You know, yeah, New York Times. Times. Yes. Yeah. That bestseller list is the only one that I ever see anybody ever mention. You know, we're on the New York Times right bestseller on. list. It's the only yeah. one that anybody ever seems to care about anymore. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, yes. having a best-selling book in Australia is it doesn't require a lot of sales. Okay, but, yeah. easy peasy. All right. Yeah. So, um, and and just, this is a little bit of a side question, but sure. I've got a friend who who used to work in the public service, and uh, he actually wrote a book. Matt Fenwick. He wrote oh, a I just book. read it. Great. Yeah, last week I just finished Fantastic. it. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I, I don't want to do a promotion for his book, um, but life without lanyards. That's right. <laughs> but but a lot of the thing he talks about is how, particularly working in the public sector, and I think also working for for companies can also create some of those self limiting beliefs. Sure. Because you're. They put you in a box and they tell you you are good at these things and you're not good at other things. Yeah. Did you ever, you know, I don't know whether the book struck any chords with it, but do you find any of that coming out of the public service that that may have shaped any of those That's things for you? That's a really good question. I, I don't know. I think I've just still got a bit of a, an outsider mentality in a way. Yeah. 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 Uh, and, you know, it probably was exacerbated by the fact that we went and lived remotely for five years. Yes. And so I went to my very first business conference last year mm -hmm. for the very first time, even though I'd already built a million-dollar company. I just learned everything online. So when I came out into the world at last, I was like, oh, my God, look at all this stuff that's <laughs> out here for people. They're not even living in the mountains and the rainforest. They're talking to each other. So that's been, yes, that was... Another part of the journey was going, oh, mm. my God, there's opportunities out here. Yeah, well, you, you've sort of built it without the support networks. Oh, totally. Yeah. I just even, even the support networks that entrepreneurs normally use. Yeah, so, totally. Yeah. I was yeah. just that, that, the, you know, hippie living in the rainforest away from everything. Mm. Oh, and it's fun in lots and lots of ways. And it meant that I had no idea that people found, you know, profitability hard or anything like that. I was like, what do you mean? It's easy to grow a tribe. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> people often pick very hard routes, I think, sometimes. They yeah, pick right things that are actually hard to do. And yes. And, or things that they're not specialists at, and that's often hard. So yeah. I think people make it harder for themselves. Often. That's true. And I'm really yeah. li grateful for the limits that I've had in my time. So I've got two small kids, and... My first baby was very, very fussy baby. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I 
didn't intentionally only work 20 hours a week. That was just all. It was the limits. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, for the first three years, all I could do was 10 hours a week away from her because she was just a crying baby, a literal yeah. cry baby. <laughs> when, we, when we had our kids, and this was a long time ago now, yeah. when my son's 18 now. Oh, um, Yeah, well, but when they were kids, uh, my partner actually, she did a lot of journalism because okay. she could do that down at the playground with them or she could do it when they were asleep. Nice. So that worked really well for her. Yes. But I think finding those routes, you know, kids is one of those times when you actually do have to uh, put somebody else ahead of yourself. Totally. And it's uh, it can be a challenge, I, I know, for some people. Yes. Yeah. But you get to be super productive. So yes. I would yes. go away and in 10 hours I would, because I knew I have got two hours right now. Yes, before they wake up. Yes. Oh my God, two hours. Um, what do I have to do to, to make my business grow? And so I was hyper-focused on it. I, it's not like I had like seven, eight hours ahead of me and gone, mm. let's just roll into work now, shall we? Yeah, it gets rid of all the clutter. Totally. You yeah. don't, and you have to answer that question. Yep. What do I have to do today to, yep. to grow my business? It makes things very, very clear and very, very sharp. And I've actually noticed since I've, my hours kind of have crept up since my kids have gotten a bit easier and a bit older, um, that I haven't been as productive as I mm -hmm. used to be, so I'm compacting it back down again into small hours. To well, get that's more an done. interesting learning as well. Yeah, you know that, uh, that you can be p productive in short bursts. Absolutely, if, if, if you've got some discipline around it. Definitely, mm -hmm. definitely. So okay, cool. So, what would you have done differently in your business, knowing what you know now? I have. Mm, I mean, I've made people hiring mistakes. Everybody does. Mm -hmm. But they taught me really, really useful lessons that I yep. wouldn't have learned otherwise. And sometimes they were horrifically painful because, you know, the people management stuff is just... That's often the hardest <coughs> bit, I find, in the business. <coughs> yeah. Hard on the floor. Yep. Yeah. But, you know, there's no way that you can read in a book and actually get it until you've experienced yeah. it. Yeah. So I, I don't know if I could do anything differently because every piece, even the really, really hard bits... It was worth it. It was worth it. I, I feel so like I feel like a sage compared to where I was six years ago. Right. I was like, oh my god, I'm so wise now, and mm. I get excited. Like, who am I going to be in twenty years? Like, what am I going to know oh, yeah. then? It's yes. going to be fun. <laughs> and um, and given you wouldn't do much differently, um, I guess um, would you do it again? Oh yeah. There's yeah. no. There's. I'll never be doing anything else for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. This is this is it for life and this is all I've ever wanted to do really mm -hmm. is to be able to turn up to work every day and go hmm, what will I write today or what will I paint today that might help people like that's fucking cool yeah that's the best fun ever and the fact that I get to do this as a job and accidentally earn a lot of money and then be able to invest in really cool philanthropy projects. And, and helping lots of people. Totally. Know, both, both through the paid projects and through the philanthropy as yeah. well. Yeah. yeah. And I'm definitely, like, I've, I've made a conscious decision. Like, I've kept my prices to be kind of mass market prices mm -hmm. on the cheaper side. You know, I know there's a lot of people out there yeah, that sell. High value. Yeah. 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 And they they prefer to do less clients at the higher value and that's super cool. Yeah. But I prefer to do, like, okay, let's make this as affordable as possible for everybody mm -hmm. and help as many people as possible and just have this whole groundswell of, of women doing the work, their work in the world and making their goals come true. That's really fun. No, that's great. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, given you do this, yes. do you think everybody can do it? If you are disciplined and persistent and courageous... And if you care profoundly about what you're creating in the world, then yeah, I do. But it takes a lot, and it takes a lot of persistence. You don't get to just do that once. No. You have to do it every single day. You have to commit. Yeah, mm -hmm. every single damn day. Yeah. You don't get to just go, eh, I did that like a few times, and it didn't work for me. Like, that's just bullshit. Yep. And I love when people are like, oh, what do you do with like writer's block? And I'm like, what's writer's block? got a deadline I'm going to share once a week with my people it has to be done yes like who gives a fuck about your own ego and about what you or your own inner work you just have to be so committed to helping the people out there 
that are really needing what you've got inside you or what you can help them with. Like you have to be so egoless about it and just be like, okay, I've got something in here and somebody over there is suffering. Of, of course I wouldn't hold that back. Why would mm -hmm. I ever hold that back? No, that's fantastic. It's fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you very much, Leone. Oh, my that pleasure. That was fantastic. <laughs> Um, you know, all the best in your business in the future. Thank you. I hope you never have to work another day in your life. I knew it's not going to happen. No. Nope. <laughs> no, neither does your husband either. No. This is a real bonus. He, he's my trophy husband. <laughs> That's he's, fantastic. Yes, and he definitely gets sexually harassed in the workplace, so good for him. <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much. Thanks, Craig. Thanks.